demonstrations have been going on for three days. By this morning, around 5,000 students were gathered outside Tehran University. It started as a pro-democracy rally, with the students protesting against new laws that restrict press freedom. But passions have been inflamed by an attack on a student dormitory. Police moved in yesterday on the student accommodation. Many protesters were injured and some may even have been killed. Around 120 students are thought to have been arrested. The arrests have just increased the size of the demonstration. It's becoming part of a wider conflict between reformers and conservatives in the Iranian government. The resignation of the higher education minister shows the seriousness of the dispute. The standoff is continuing. We started to a kind of new approach. We said this law is not enough good for reform. We should, you know, separate ourselves and uh, from the, this idea, and we should uh, push the president to change. For as long as universities have existed in Iran, students have been at the forefront of political and social change. Akbar Atri joined the student movement in 1995 and was elected in 1998 to a central leadership role in Takim e Vadat, the largest student organization in Iran and one of the few organizations in that country to democratically elect its leaders. Akbar used his position as a student leader to organize his fellow students into a larger movement for governmental change. I was uh, elected by vote of the student as a their representative, by, I find myself for every time a foot soldier for supporting human rights and democracy in my country. Early in Akbar's activism, students banded together to elect Mohammad Katami as president in 1997. In his campaign, Katami promised to bring reform to Iran, especially in the areas of rule of law, women's equality, and increasing the voice of citizens in Iran's government. His victory over a conservative candidate surprised the country and was widely a result of grassroots efforts by students. Say nobody believed would be elected as an Iranian president because we don't have anything. We don't have a media, newspaper. Everything is in hand of the government. The university became a, as a you know base of Khatami's campaign, and finally Khatami elected as a president by 74% of the vote. That, that was the kind of the new revolution. Student activism continued with the implicit blessing of the reforms president, but was under continuous threats from powerful conservative factions in the country. On July 8, 1999, the Iranian government closed a reformist newspaper, triggering a peaceful student demonstration at Tehran University. Police and plainclothes security forces raided a dormitory, beat students, and trapped many in their rooms. My mother woke me up uh, and gave me a you know, uh, uh, telephone. I, when I hear just, I hear the some crying. And it was one of the, my colleagues who go uh, hurry up. The, 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 the militia attacked the university. When I got the university, everything was, you know, horrible. All fight what was bloody. Our 800 student dormitory room were destroyed completely. And our 400 student injured, thousand, thousand they arrested. The protest then spread beyond the university, lasting a week. More than 25,000 people throughout Iran participated in what became the largest political demonstration since 1979. Over 4,000 university students were imprisoned during the protests. Many were tortured and some remain behind bars to this day. Sadly, with the latest regime change in Iran, in which conservative president Mahmoud Ahmadinejad rose to power, conditions on university campuses have become even more repressive. The government has blown up campus buildings where student activities had taken place forced the retirement of more than 100 liberal professors, suspended student activists, and forbidden female students from wearing makeup or bright colors. Fortunately, brave student activists continue to struggle for democracy and human rights both inside and outside of Iran. Other groups have begun to join the students in calling for democracy in Iran, including the labor movement, women's movement, and religious activists. 
This burgeoning civil society, along with help from international democracy activists, is cause for optimism about the future of Iran. Akbar Atri was arrested and tortured for his activism until he was forced to flee Iran in 2005. Now, he uses the freedoms available to him in the United States to try and help the friends he left at home. I left Iran after the, the 10 years of civil activism. I have been sentenced to seven years to jail. Now, it's my obligation to support my colleagues in Iran. I have been trying transferring American civil rights act, uh, experience to my country. Other activists have met even worse fates. Student movement leader Akbar Muhammadi died in prison at the age of 37. Before he died, he wrote a letter to the head of the Islamic judiciary. It should be recognized that I, Akbar Muhammadi, and others will continue our resistance at any cost. Even though I have lost the use of my kidney, even if I have lost my hearing, if my bones ache from constant beatings and I am not able to walk easily, to prove my innocence and defend my rights in this Evan prison, I shall still cry out to the world, long live Iran, long live freedom, justice shall prevail. <laughs>